Valavaria's horse, which had rested so long, was now in good vigor, within a moment, Katam Birch had reached the door of Sam Bavariyar's mansion. Senkanar Sam Bavariyar was one of the chieftains of the Chola clan of that time. The gate of his palace was like the gate of a great city. The long walls on either side of the door curved like castle walls. At the gate of the fort there were elephants, horses, bulls, those who would catch and tie all those animals, those who would feed them, those who would show them water, those who would hold torches here and there and light them, and those who would give oil to the torches, were all in one place. Seeing all this, Valavarian felt some hesitation and confusion in his heart. Something very special is happening here. He thought that we have come together at this time. On the one hand, there was a burning desire to see what was happening. The gates of the fort were open. But at the open door were standing some of the soldiers who had caught fire. They looked like Yamakan Gars. The valiant youth thought that if he hesitated they would stop him and it was best to bravely leave the horse and go inside. He immediately put that idea into action. But what disappointment! As the horse approached the gate of the fort two horsemen crossed their fences to block the way. Four more men came and held the horse's bridle. One of them stared at Vandiyadeva. Another brought a torch and held it high in the face. Valavarian's face became angry, is this the custom of your town? Stopping guests at the door. He said. Who are you, brother, talking so rudely? Which town? Said the gatekeeper. My town and name are you asking? My town is Thiruvallam of Vanagapadi country. Once upon a time your countrymen were proud to write the names of my clan ancestors on their chests. My name is Valavarian Vandiyathevan. Do you know? He said. Even bringing in a builder to say that much. Said one of the guards. Hearing this, the others laughed. Whoever you are, you can't go in any more. All the guests who are supposed to come today have arrived. It's the master's order not to let anyone in. Said the head guard. Some soldiers who were standing some distance inside the fort came near seeing some argument going on. One of them said, I. Is it like that blind man we chased out of the festival there? He said. Another said, Don't say donkey. He who sits on a donkey sits stiffly, Bharata. Said another. These words fell on Valavaria's ears. He thought to himself, what's the fuss? Shall we go back and leave? Or shall we show them the seal of Prince Aditha Kari Kalar and go in? The idea appeared. Isn't there anyone from Vedapena to Kumari Muna who can stop himself after seeing the symbol of Prince, the leader of the Northern Army? It was while he was debating in his mind that the taunts of the people of Palyavatare fell on his ears. He immediately decided what to do. Leave the horse, I'm going back. He said. The halters let go of the horse's face rope. Vandiyadeva pressed the underbelly of the horse with both his feet. At the same time he drew the sword from its sheath. The sword that caught the eye with the light of lightning seemed to be spinning with Tyrumal's chakrayot in his hand due to its spinning speed. The horse galloped into the forward line. Soldiers on the way suddenly fell down. The vines thrashed and fell. The horse galloped at the Palliaver soldiers who were making a fuss. The soldiers scattered in all directions, little expecting this lightning attack. Many other things have happened in the meantime. The fort gates were slammed and slammed. Hold. Hold. There were cries of blades and swords clashed and clang clang. A sudden warning sound of datum. Damn. He shouted. Soldiers came and surrounded Vandiyathevan's horse. Above twenty, thirty, fifty people. Vandiyadeva on the horse galloped and jumped to the ground. Swinging the sword in his hand, he shouted. Kandamara. Kandamara. Your men are killing me. He shouted. Hearing this, the soldiers surrounding him were startled and hesitated a little and stood away. At that moment, from the upstairs facade of the mansion, what's that noise? Stop. A thunderous voice was heard. 
at the place where the voice was heard, seven or eight people were standing and watching him walk down. Master! Someone has breached the guard. Calling the little master's name. Said someone from below. Kandamara! You go and see what the commotion is. Thus the same thunderous voice uttered from the upper floor. Vandiyathevan thought that the person who has that voice is like Senkanar Sambhavariyar. He and the soldiers standing around him stood still for some time. What's the demonstration here? A small voice said. Those standing where they heard the voice moved away and made way. A young man came rushing through. He looked at Vandiyathevan in surprise for a moment, who was standing like Subramaniyar who was performing Surasamharam with the knife in his hand lightly twirling. Wow, my lovely friend. Is it really you? The young man ran away and hugged Valavarian with a cry of emotion. Kandamara. I came to your house as you have read and read and said many times. I got such a heroic welcome at the place where I came, Vandiyathevan pointed to the people standing around him. He looked at them and said, See. You fools. Don't go. Your knowledge is burning the plunger said Kanamaran. Gondhamaran grabbed Vandiyadeva's hand and dragged him away. His feet kept bouncing on the ground. His heart also jumped. What could be more exhilarating than finding a true soul mate in youth? Yes, love makes something happen. But there is much more pain and suffering in love than there is joy and happiness. Not even a shadow of sorrow falls on the friendly joy of youth. The only joy is the ecstasy of the heart. As he was leaving, Valavarian said, Kandamara. What is going on here today? Why is there so much security? He said. Then I will tell you in detail about what is special here today. When you and I were staying at the Panayarangaripasarai, did you say, I want to see Pavatarayar, I want to see Malavarayar, I want to see him, I want to see this one. That he, this one, Suvar, you can see them all here today," said Kanamaran. Then, Kanthamaran took Valavaria to the top floor of the mansion where the guests were seated. He first took him to his father, Sambhavariyar, and stopped and said, Father! Do you often tell them about my friend Vandiyadeva? He is the one. He said. Vandiyadeva bowed down and worshipped the elder. The judge didn't seem too pleased. Really? Is this the one who made such a fuss at the palace gate down there? He asked. It's not my friend who's causing the trouble, it's the fools we've hired to guard the gate. Said Kanamaravel. Though today, and after dark and half a day, he needn't have come with such a demonstration. Said Sambhavariyar. Kanamaravel's face was shriveled, and he didn't want to argue with his father. He took Vandiyathevan away. He took him to Palyavatarayar, who was sitting on a high pedestal in the middle of the guests, and said, Uncle. This is my lifelong friend Vandiyathevan, of the clan of the Vana Emperor. He and I were guarding the border at Vatapanakare at Pasarai. At that time, he used to say, the hero must see the great Palyavatarayar. Is it true that Tyrumani has 64 war wounds? He would ask. I would say, one day you should think about it. Palyavatarayar frowned, Really, brother? You won't believe unless you see for yourself? Are you so pessimistic? Can there be bravery in any other clan than the monkey clan? Do you doubt that? He said. Both the guys were startled. He did not expect that he would take what he said as a joke like this. Vandiyadeva's mind was irritated. However, Without revealing himself, he said, Sir. The fame of the Palyavatare clan has spread from Kumari Node to the Himalayas. Who am I to doubt it? He said politely. Good answer, naughty boy. Said the gardener. Both the youths left the place saying that they had survived. Then Sambhavariyar called his son and said, Give your companion some food soon and tell him to sleep in a separate place. He is tired after a long journey. Maravila shook his head angrily and left. Then he took Marambal Vandiyadeva to that param. 
there were many women there. Vandiyathevan bowed to the mother of Maravila. He surmised that the woman hiding shyly behind her must be Kanamaran's sister. Vandiyathevan was imagining something when he said about Thangachi several times. Now he was somewhat disappointed. Vandiyadeva's eyes wandered to find out who could be Mathu who came in the palanquin with Palyavatare in the crowd of women.